uniqueness theorem for limit states, that a sequence A, N, has at most one limit. Let's start by pointing out some technical details. In general, a uniqueness theorem asserts the uniqueness, of an object satisfying, certain conditions, or the equivalence of all things satisfying the said conditions. There are two common approaches to proving uniqueness theorems. The first option is by a direct proof. Start by assuming objects, L1, and L, 2, satisfy the conditions. Then inference statement establishes that they are equal. The second option is the proof by contradiction. Start by assuming that the theorem is false, that is assume that there exist two different objects L1 and L2 and that they satisfy the conditions. Show that this assumption leads to a contradiction. Let's present a proof of the uniqueness theorem for limits. In previous discussions, we constructed our proofs based on a technical aspect of the epsilon n definition. Let's let intuitive inspirations guide us here. Before choosing an approach, let's visualize the situation. Let's try to understand what forces the one limit rule. One option is attempting to observe what goes wrong if there is more than one limit. Let's focus on the simplest case, two limits, L1 and L2. Let's consider the case when L1 is greater than L2. We are not writing a proof, just trying to get a clue. We can focus on special situations. L1 is a limit. Therefore as n gets larger and larger, the terms of a, n, should get closer and closer to L1. Also, L2 is a limit. Therefore, as n gets larger and larger, the terms of a, n should get closer and closer to L2. Think about the two requirements. You may get a tingling sensation here. Something is wrong. L1 is different from L2. There is a gap between them. When terms get extremely close to one, they have to drift away from the other. The statements can't hold together. Now, this is not proof, just an intuitive perception. Can we convert it to a proof? We can convert this to proof, by capturing this observation through the epsilon n definition. Since L1 and L2 are limits of A, N, they should satisfy the definition. For any given epsilon greater than zero, since L2 is a limit, there exists n. Value say n2, such that all a n, terms after that will lie in the green epsilon tube around L2. For any given epsilon greater than zero, since L1 is a limit, there exists n. Value say n1, such that all a n, terms after that will lie in the green epsilon tube around L2. Now, if you consider the terms after larger n, in this instance, it's n1. They should lie in the blue tube around L1. Also, they are after n2. Therefore, they should lie in the green tube around L2. That is, they should lie on both tubes. The observation should hold for all positive epsilon values. It's only possible if tubes are overlapping. If we choose a small enough epsilon, we can guarantee that the tubes will not overlap. So it's impossible to two statements to hold at once. With these perceptions, it's tempting to use the proof by contradiction approach in this situation. We must encode the above reasoning into sets of formal logical arguments, leading to a contradictory statement in the proof. We end this discussion by laying a framework to obtain the contradictory statement. Pick any a n that comes after n1. Let's choose third term after n1 and label it by n3. According to the arguments, it should lie in the blue epsilon tube around L1. Therefore it lies above the line Y equals L1 minus epsilon and should satisfy the inequality 1. At the same time, it should lie in the green epsilon tube around L2. Therefore it should satisfy the inequality 2. Combining two inequalities give equality 3. By dropping the middle a n. In 3 we conclude that that L12 plus epsilon is greater than L1 minus epsilon. According to the picture, if we select small enough epsilon that prohibits the overlapping tubes, then we get the reverse inequality, this should lead to the contradiction. The theorem states that a sequence has at most one limit. Let's assume that the given statement is wrong. Then the sequence will have more than one limit so it should have at least two different limits. Let's label them by L1 and L2. 
Now note that according to the assumption, L1 is not equal to L2. Now since L1 and L2 are limits, they should satisfy the epsilon definition. We don't have to prove that they are limits. We can take them to be limits. Therefore for any given epsilon, we can assume the n values as in 1 and 2. We don't have to hunt for them. Note that n values may depend on epsilon. Even for given epsilon, we cannot expect the same n value for work for both limits. Now we have to choose a small enough epsilon so that tubes will not overlap. The difference gives the distance between L1 and L2. We don't know which one is bigger, so we use the absolute value to keep things positive. Taking epsilon to be one-fourth of the distance prevents tubes from overlapping. The epsilon n definition guarantees the existence of n values as in 3 and 4. Now we choose n value greater than both ns1 and ns2 and label it by nnote. Since n note is bigger than ns1, a n note satisfy the inequality 5. We get to 6 by rewriting 5. Now adding l1 to all sides of 6 gives 7. Since n note is bigger than ns2, we get 8. Let's concentrate on inequalities 7 and 10. Inequality 7 says that an note should stay within the epsilon tube around L1, and 10 says that an note has to stay within the epsilon tube around L2. When we visualize these conditions, we assume that L1 is bigger than L2 to get the contradiction. We have to be careful about such an assumption in the proof, because it may break the generality. Originally, we assumed that L1 is not equal to L2. This lead to two possibilities L1 greater than L2 or L2 greater than L1. It can be unfair to favor one. There are a few workarounds. We choose a proof by exhaustion, also known as proof by cases. Case 1. Let's assume that L2 is greater than L1, combining inequalities 7 and 10 gives 11. Moving epsilon s to the right, we get 12. Plug in for epsilon s gives 13. In this case, L2 is bigger than L1, we drop the absolute value at 14. Further simplifications give us 15. Again using the case 1 assumption, L2 is greater than L1 we can get to 17. Which says L2 is greater than itself. Case 1 leads to a contradiction. Case 2. Assume that L1 is greater than L2. Again, combining inequalities 7 and 10, we get inequality 18. Then following exactly similar steps as case 1, we get to the contradiction given by the inequality 24. Case 2 leads to a contradiction. The assumption, the sequence has more than one limit leads to a contradiction. Therefore, the assumption is wrong. That is we conclude that the sequence can have at most one limit.